speaker. I met Jim Rowan many years ago with a gentleman by the name of William E. Bailey, who wished he could be here. William Bailey had a company called Best Line Products. And he spoke in Columbus, Ohio, at the Neil House Hotel. I was at another meeting, and I heard his voice coming through the room, and I came over to hear what was going on. And he introduced Jim. And the power of his words, when Jim finished speaking, I ran downstairs and called a friend named Robert Boyd and said, listen, I've got to get involved in this business. Because Jim spoke, I bought $7,200 worth of biodegradable soap. <laughs> because Jim spoke, I have some zip in my house right now. I had it, Tony, brought to the house and put in the living room. So when I came home, I'd have to step in and go around that stacked all the way to the ceiling because he helped me to believe that I could live my dream. Because Jim spoke. You think about this person that you now see. I did not know that he existed. I was born in a poor section of Miami, Florida called Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor with a twin brother. And we were adopted by Mrs. Mamie Brown. She was 46, third grade education. We ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for on Miami Beach, kind and generous people. We wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that she kept. When I was in fifth grade, I was labeled educable, mentally retarded, put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade, failed again when I was in the eighth grade. And with that limited and diminished sense of self, Robert Boyd gave me a Jim Rowan speech. And because he spoke how people live their lives as a result of the story they believe about themselves, he interrupted the story that I believed about myself. And when he spoke, he empowered me to begin to become, as Mother Teresa would say, a pencil in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter in my life. When he spoke. I began to see the possibilities of not being where I was. He taught me that my history did not have to become my future. When he spoke, he was able to help me to begin to see that all of us have greatness within us. But greatness, it's a choice. It's not our destiny. Let us say together, live full. Live full. Die empty. Die empty. The ideal situation for a man or woman to die is to have family members praying with them as they cross over. But I know that, imagine if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, and the talents given to you by life, but you, for whatever reason, you never acted on those ideas, you never pursued those dreams, you never used those gifts, and there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you, and only you could have given us life, and now, we must die with you forever. When Jim spoke, Jim said, when the end comes for you, let it find you conquering a new mountain, not sliding down and over. <laughs> Jim taught us that things may happen to you and things may happen around you, but the only things that really count are the things that happen in you. Jim teaches us now that recessions restores resourcefulness. Jim speaks to us now daily as we are the embodiment of his message and as we must take it into the future to continue the spirit and the legacy that the casket and the grave cannot hold because he's here with us. And I'd like to leave this with you. I don't know what your goals are. I don't know what your dream is. Here's what I know. This man touched my life. Here's what I know. This guy that you now see, I did not know he existed. When he spoke, I died to who I was to give birth to who I'm still becoming. And something, when we were in Singapore, and I remember as I was getting ready to speak, he started taking notes. I said, Jim, don't take any notes. He said, why? I said, this is your stuff. <laughs> So he loved 
me to say this and I dedicate this to you in his spirit and memory. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold, poverty, famish, or gold, sickness or pain of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if dogged and grim, you besiege and beset it, with the help of God, you will get it. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's Baby Boy and Jim Rowan's Pride and Joy. God bless you. God bless your dream. And God